So what is spectrum lighting? And why do we move towards spectrum lighting? Well, if we look at birds, and this is looking at how birds perceive lights. Well, there's the eye, like us. But in addition to the eyes, you also have several other organs that also have photoreceptors and have the ability to perceive light. And of interest, we have the pineal gland, again, like us, but in the case of bird, the pineal gland has its own photoreceptors. So the light can direct the circadian rhythm, so the night and day's control of the birds, even if they don't have a functional eye. So pineal gland is one. And of interest to me was what we call deep brain photoreceptors. Those are photoreceptors located in the hypothalamus of the brain. And that means light is able to penetrate through the skull, through the brain tissues, and activate those photoreceptors that will then control a lot of the physiological process of the bird, including reproduction, stress axis, as well as the growth and uh, nutrition. So here, just to have step back and look at the eye itself. And why I put that slide up here is everybody uses lux as a unit okay, of measuring intensity. And what is lux? And the same thing with foot candle. It is based on the human perception. So the density of photoreceptors in the human retina. And if you look on the graph that should be on the left, there, the black line, the thick black line, correspond to the sensitivity of the human retina. Now, superimposed to that, the thick blue line correspond to the spectral sensitivity of a chicken. So what do you see? Well, around the green spectrum, they see pretty much as we do. But as soon as you deviate from green spectrum, what we saw as a low intensity, they're going to see it as a much brighter intensity. So which means if you use a lux meter to measure your intensity at the level of the eye, what you consider as 10 lux for you may appear as 30, 40, or 50 lux for a chicken. So what I mean by that is the lux meter, although that's the kind of unit everybody uses, may not be the most appropriate. And hopefully, we'll be able to come up soon with all the technology we have should not be that difficult with what we call the clux or the chicken lux equivalent that we'll be able to, to use. And on the right hand side there, it shows you the spectral output of different light types. And as you can see, the incandescent bulb is pretty much towards the red spectrum. The majority of the light which is emitted by the light bulbs was towards the red spectrum. Fluorescent on the other, the, the other end, pick towards the green-yellow spectrum. And if you look at daylight, well, daylight is pretty much equivalent through the entire spectrum. So what does that mean? That means that when you use one bulb versus another bulb versus another one, first of all, they don't emit the same thing. They are not detected the same way by a chicken and a human. So in fact, a lot of our units and what we use to measure things may absolutely not be appropriate. So let's bring that now to what is the significance of that. Well, and I'll summarize pretty much 10 years of research here from around the world into two main things, two key things that have appeared when people have started looking at the spectrum lighting. Green, blue light with some yellow, and that has been shown by a group uh, in the uh, Hebrew University in Jerusalem, uh, the group of Rosenboim and uh, Dr. Alevi, have shown pretty clearly that green and blue light will stimulate growth and will stimulate muscle growth in broilers as well, also help stimulate feed conversion and some new research so that it may even impact the mucosal development of the gut, so the potentially the immunity of the digestive system. On the other hand, research has been showing that red light looks that it is primary dri a driver for reproduction. And what I'll go over now is show you our results that actually confirm that red light is critical uh, to stimulate the reproductive axis. Okay, our first research, that was when I was playing in my sandbox. My goal was to find out what were the mechanism in the brain that triggered the onset of lay and maintenance of lay. And for that, I needed a model. And in order to get a model, I got a flock of birds, or a strain of birds from Michigan State University that then I established at Guelph that have a genetic mutation that triggers the degenera degeneration of the retina. So de facto, those birds 
become fully blind before they reach six weeks of age. So for me, that was the best model because I had a model with no visual reception and no functional retina. So I could look at the impact of light wavelength then on directly on the brain and see what would happen. And using those birds, that's a, a line of birds which is called smoky joes, then we expose them to pure green, pure red, or a white light with the equivalent amount uh, of, of spectrum. And what did we see? Well, there on the table, we have the sexual maturation at age at first day. And what we saw that, in fact, red light, as well as white light that had red light in it, advanced sexual maturation. So they responded to photostimulation when they were exposed to red or to white light. If they were exposed to pure green, they were way delayed. And in fact, it looks like they just spontaneously mature with a big delay in it. So then you wonder, huh, we've got something there. And on top of that, we did not observe any drastic difference between blind and sighted, which means the effect of red light was independent of the retina of the eye and was really going straight through the brain to those deep brain photoreceptors. Now on the right hand side, I've got two curves there showing estradiol. Why is estradiol important? Well, estradiol is a steroid hormone which is produced by the small follicles in the ovary as the, the small follicles are recruited and start to grow towards the hierarchy. And why it is important, it is the hormone that will stimulate the development of the reproductive tract, but will impact calcium metabolism, mobilization of calcium in preparation for egg laying for the shell, and as well as the liver for the synthesis of the components of the, of the egg. So estradiol will actually be beneficial for that hand to go through a laying phase. And again, what we saw, we had a significant increase in estradiol when hands were exposed to red light. So it looks like our hypothesis was correct. Red light penetrated through the skull, stimulated the hypothalamus, activated the hormonal axis, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, ovary, that resulted in an upregulation of all the hormonal axis. Whereas on the other end, green light appeared to be totally ineffic inefficient. So what about egg laying? So, of course, that line of birds was not selected for high production. And if you look at the production curve, we're talking about a birds from the 1960s, okay, which is truly photoperiodic. Photostimulation, peak around 80%, and then with it 20 weeks later, already started to drop out of production. But what that told us using that model of birds, again, was the red and the white light actually had the highest number of eggs. And even reds was higher, but due to the low numbers, I think we were not able to reach significance. Whereas on the other end, green birds were lagging behind quite significantly. Just as a side note, when we compared the sighted versus the blind birds, the sighted bird actually dropped earlier than the blind ones under green light, suggesting that not only there was no stimulatory effect, but there may be potentially an inhibitory effect from green light via the retina. So what was the uh, results of that? Well, we confirmed our hypothesis, and we were delighted with that. However, the main problem is we had a fancy LED lighting system controlled by computer that cost us about $700 for a two feet long strip. So extremely expensive, and those were frying like popcorn in the barn. So that told us that, you know what, if we were ever to move forward, we would have to find something else, because obviously not uh, commercially uh, important. 